Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome you all uh, to our uh, webinar with uh, Slovenska Sporiteľnia, the leading bear bank here in Slovakia. And I would like to thank you uh, all for joining us. And uh, first of all, also to, uh, to our friends from Slovenska Sporiteľnia, namely uh, Norbert Hovanchak, who is the member of the board of Slovenska Sporiteľnia responsible for corporate banking, and uh, also Patrick Pajtaš, who is um, uh, director of sales for corporate banking also within Slovenska Sporiteľnia. I don't have to uh, very much talk about uh, Slovenska Sporiteľnia as such, uh, but what is important to say, of course, you know that uh, it is part of Erste Group, which is a very big uh, European uh, bank focused on Central Europe mostly, and it has a lot of know-how and experience and also we have uh, two really competent uh, gentlemen with us uh, who have uh, in total more than 40 years of banking experience. So I think we have the right guys to talk about our today's topic, which is uh, financing uh, corporations in, in time of crisis. Uh, I will uh, start by uh, saying a couple of words about housekeeping rules, which is important for us to have a productive discussion. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask all of you who are not speaking uh, to turn off your microphones and if possible also cameras so that we do not uh, disturb each other. If you want to, uh, if you want to talk, uh, you, can, you can of course raise your hand. Uh, we are using WebEx platform which is um, quite flexible and is allowing us also to raise uh, questions during the discussion. Uh, if you have a question, uh, you, can, you can send it uh, via chat. Uh, if you go to the, uh, uh, to the bar uh, below the presentation, you, you see a bubble, and if you click on it, you can, you can pose a question directly uh, to the gentleman uh, presenting uh, their ideas and their experience, or you can, of course, ask directly if you want. I suggest you, you send us your questions um, uh, during the discussion, and after each block, we will, we will uh, try, or uh, Mr. Hovanchak and Mr. Paitash will try to answer your questions, and then we will move to the next block. Uh, if possible, and we have time, uh, we have uh, in total one hour to discuss uh, this topic. Uh, then, uh, then uh, we can also take some additional questions at the end. So now with that, uh, I would just uh, say that uh, the agenda is quite rich. We have a uh, very, very interesting presentation talking about macroeconomic overview, uh, guidance for corporations, as well as specific uh, financing solutions presented by Erste uh, and Slovenska Sporiteľnia. So with that, I would like to uh, uh, hand over the floor to, to our friends from Slovenska Sporiteľnia. Mr. Hovanchak, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ronald. I appreciate the introduction and good morning. And it's great to be speaking with all of you today. Uh, <clears throat> at the beginning, I would like to share the content of our presentation. That means on the next slide, please. Here is the content which we would like to present to you and also discuss this topic with you. Uh, firstly, we will first part will be about the current macro view, our, our standpoint to this and also the outlook, how we see the environment, how we see the economy. Then second one, we will uh, present the guiding principles for corporate, meaning that how we see as Erste and as Slovenska Sporiteľnia, how we are be how we are behaved to in current times, what we are changing in the operations, and how we are support the economy and our clients, how we deal with this situation. And the third part that will be the real specific measures presented by us, how we are supporting our clients and how we operate, how we provide the business in, in current days. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to also say that Erste, we have put in place measures to ensure the health and well-being of both our 47,000 employees and 16 million customers in the region. In Slovakia, it means that this includes 
4,000 employees and 2.3 million our customers, thereof 130,000 entrepreneurs and the businesses. Uh, we are the integral part of the real economy in the Central Eastern Europe and also in Slovakia, and we are fully committed to helping businesses, entrepreneurs and households as well during this crisis, and we will have an important role in helping individuals and companies which are facing the many challenges raised by the current crisis. Uh, and at the beginning, the last words from my side, and they I will pass to Patrick the, for the first part. Uh, as hospitals are in the first line for people to helping them with the physical help, we want to be and we are currently in the first line for our clients, helping them with their financial health. Uh, that's from my side for the beginning. And Patrick will continue with the first part, macro overview and the outlook. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, I will start brief introduction regarding macroeconomic view. Uh, at the beginning, we have to define a uh, disruptive economic situation. We, we got used to be in a predictable times, but now we are really in a unpredictable times. So we try to make some predictions under unpredictable conditions. So let's have a look. Uh, definitely we ex expect this year recession this recession will be tough for our economy for our customers for corporate corporate community but positive sign is that this recession should be temporary mm. uh, we expect impact on domestic and foreign demand in uh, first half of 2020 and most impacted uh, industry industries will be manufacturing services retail trade also for this year we expect fiscal deficit close to 7.5 percent of gdp and unemployment rate should rise to 7.8 percent uh, to put precise uh, note to this outlook we have to say this this is current outlook from this week so the situation is changing from week to week and of course, we will adapt to changing environment, also our outlooks. In principle, uh, we can define that, that crises have three uh, shapes. First shape is V-shape, second shape U-shape, and then L-shape, you, you know it. Uh, based on empirical uh, analysis from the past, Flu shocks have all been V-shaped. So uh, in this V-shaped shock, we expect that uh, growth level should recover within a few months. But to add to this, we expect also based on uh, historical outbreaks experienced multiple waves. So currently worldwide, uh, we live most probably first wave. As you can see, this picture is uh, showing us the situation during the Spanish flu. So definitely we see that uh, after the first wave, there will be no end of corona. Okay. Uh, in order to, to shorten this period of crisis, uh, there will be important to uh, get va vaccine in hand, but on the other hand, uh, also to uh, be ready to um, bring it to population. Okay. Outlook for 2021, we expect uh, GDP growth in average 4.5% in 2021. Uh, unemployment, unemployment rate should uh, slightly go down to 7.5%, and nominal wages should grow up to 3.5%. And 
also we expect consumer price growth close to 2.3 percent. Uh, Sorry to interrupt. Is it, is it uh, this prediction based on on the assumption that there is no second wave of of the virus? Yes, yes. This is a prerequisite for this outlook is that there is no second wave because now it's very difficult to to quantify second wave whether it will be or not. So. We, we, we presented just historical uh, numbers and all other is just discussion. So very difficult to define the size of uh, or, or strength of second wave and question whether there will be second wave. Logically from the past there should be, but we are in 21st century. Might be that we will manage it better than in the past 20, 50, or 100 years. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in macroeconomic environment in European Union, we do not expect liquidity problems because of uh, 750 billion pandemic emergency purchase program introduced by European Central Bank, which should last until end of 2020. Okay, maybe uh, before we will continue, maybe space for the questions and from we can discuss this our assumptions for macro macro view, how we see it. This is macro view based on which we are providing also the forecast as a bank, uh, how we see the business on the retail side and also on the corporate side as a bank. Yeah, that means this is the assumptions for for our uh, business for net, for this year. Uh, of course, anyone can ask. So far, I have not seen any questions. So maybe uh, before anyone else asks, I would have a question. Uh, how would you um, describe the condition, the health of the of the financial sector to sustain such a big drop in the European GDP and global GDP? You think we don't have to speak about Erste in general, but. Uh, or in specifically, but in general, you think that the financial conditions of or, or the, uh, the the financial situation of big European banks is is uh, good enough to sustain such a big drop in the GDP? Yeah, uh, I think that if we compare the banks, and this is not only this is real based on the facts. Yeah, we expect that the banks and banking sector in the European Union is the better prepared, is the, in the better shape comparing to crisis 2008 or before the crisis 2008. Now we have the really uh, high liquidity buffer. We have the capital buffer. Yeah, that means all measures which was done by the ECB after the crisis and bank now are, banks are now better prepared. I think that I can tell uh, for a whole sector, not only for Erste, but also Erste is really prepared for the crisis. And that's why we are uh, we are ready to support by the liquidity and by the measures which we are which will be presented also by us that we are prepared to to behave differently comparing to the uh, situation after 2008-9. Anyone else would like to ask any question, or we can move on? Okay, let's move on. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now uh, the second part is about the. Some general how we how we see the our role in the in the region in the Slovakia and how we behave how we are changing the business model uh, from the for this for these times. Uh, as firstly, I would like to say that banks have an important role for to play in helping individuals and companies uh, which are facing the many challenges raised by the current crisis. We are continuing to service our customers. That means customers can count on Erste to remain up and running. Yeah, this is the first uh, statement from us that we are no changing the business model. We are not stopping any services providing the customer. We are changing how to, how to provide these services towards the client. That means uh, all our advisors, risk managers in the bank, IT specialists, analysts are absolutely everybody from them in the bank as are committed to helping our clients. Our banking services have remained up and running, as I mentioned, and also thanks to 
digital solutions, digital banking offerings, we are available for the clients 24 slash 7. Here are call centers and contactless payment solutions. Also our branches, we close our branches uh, for four hours in the, in the region, but since next week, we again open and we will be, uh, we will be uh, open our we, we will open our branches without any any restriction. This is decision from yesterday uh, done by the bank. Yeah, that means we will not restrict it or the uh, limited the opening hours in our branches now and from the next week uh, will be again open as, as before the crisis. Mr. Hovanchak, uh, Norbert, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but I noticed that, of course, you want to discourage people attending, you know, uh, these brick and mortar uh, branches. You want people, your customers, to uh, utilize as much as possible internet banking. So this is this is very. Yeah. Nevertheless, you open the branches uh, for normal operations. Yes. Yes. And we are changing the contacting of the and, and the changes the business model also on the on the operation on the in the branches. That means all our employees has the uh, remote access to the to the uh, to the systems. All are possible also to do work and uh, work from the home, and also they are able to contact clients via the digital solutions. Yeah. Now how we are discussing now uh, via this. WebEx platform, uh, there is also the possibility, and we are using a lot of uh, communication with our clients also via uh, similar similar application and the software solution. Okay, that means this is about the general, how we are operating, and LSA still remain up and running in all countries uh, across the Europe. Then, of course, um, from the, we expect, and this is main role in the current times, we expect main works and main job on our side uh, related to the to the loan clients that means we see a high significant increase of the finance of the financing and payment deferrals requests and uh, from the for that we are also expecting that the governments in our regions and also in Slovakia will play a significant role uh, i would like to mention maybe the, the, there is the different stage of the government support in each country in our region. For example, Austria already approved 4 billion package for loan guarantees, tax deferrals, uh, wages subsidies. In Hungary, it's already valid the moratorium. Yeah, that means up to six, nine months uh, payment deferrals approved by the state and is provided automatically by the banks. That means in Hungary already working. Uh, in Slovakia, we are, st we are still waiting for the for the for this moratorium for the payments, which I think that yesterday was approved, uh, but the detail was not presented. Still, we are waiting for the for the approval by the parliament and then implementation in the in the in the sector. Uh, but then. Uh, we are really in close cooperation with the governments and with the respective bodies which are now dealing with this issue. And uh, as was uh, in uh, during the last weekend announced this, this distribution of the liquidity in amount of 500 million euro monthly basis, this is still not clear. And now we are starting discussion with the, with the Ministry of Finance and the respective bodies how this liquidity will be distributed via the banking sector. Yeah, that means there is no details about the scheme. Where we are participating, we will, we will say later on. That means this is the general view on the how Erste see current situation from the operations point of view. Uh, we did also a lot of, or not a lot of, but we did last week also the research between our clients and we would like to share uh, the results of this research, how our clients reacting uh, uh, on the current situation. And based on this research, we will also behave towards, towards these customers. That means this, on this slide, you can see uh, how is distribution of our portfolio from the, from the parameters 
uh, who expect the uh, which develop which developing on the ratio on the EBIT margin and on the sales growth yeah and sales development and you can see that 12 percent of the companies answering that they are expecting the expand uh, expansion increasing of the of the EBIT margin and increase of the sales growth and 60 percent are already during the last uh, uh, during the first three weeks of the emergency state in our country yeah shrinking on the EBITDA margin side and also uh, falling or decrease of the sales growth yeah. <clears throat> from the industry point of view I think that we are only confirming what is already presented in the media and you know that mainly affected industries are leisure activities hotels and all services provided to the to the people uh, like fitnesses like restaurants like all services related to, to the leisure activities and these industries and affected on 100 percent really 100 percent uh customers which was asked in this research uh, answer it that they are 100 percent affected then there there is the construction industry and logistic and transportation yeah this is the main affected industry and also the automotive but we as a sport and erste we have experience with the with the tier one tier two suppliers which are currently also uh, things that i that are affected but still not immediately but it will come later on <clears throat> on the in, on the this the best quadrant this 12 percent of our customer customers which see the good development is these times are related to the food industry agriculture industry and energy industry this is the first uh, results which i would like to i would like to share and sorry here, if i may have a question so yeah? coming back uh, to the slide you just presented with this uh, quadrant uh, so uh, what about the situation here in slovakia in general you would say that you know like what is the percentage of the of the economy which is really flourishing in these downturns so that means really like uh, in general i think this is valid for most of europe but when we speak specifically about slovakia and your exposure you know to the current to the local economy so this 12 percent in slovakia uh, is it really uh, substantial part of the economy or is it negligible part maybe maybe i will clarify maybe this is misunderstanding that this is a result from our portfolio research yeah that okay. means this is our loan clients which we ask how they see the development of these two main ratio financial ratios uh, in their business i understand that means this is, mm -hmm. in general in slovakia so this is a substantial part so you would have like a really uh i would say representative sample of the yeah. economy as your clients or you are somehow you know focus more on some on some sectors and it's, mm -hmm. it's not really something what okay. is a good sample. now now understand yeah, yeah this is the from my point of view representative uh, part of the economy our share this is also uh figure which i can share our share on the market uh, on the loan market is is uh, 16 percent based on the end of 2019 then i think that it can be based on this share representative also for the whole slovakia okay yeah, yeah you can continue thank you yeah? okay 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 then this is the result about the about the client which uh, which answer it to our to our questionnaire yeah and there is the description the results of these five questions i would like to maybe highlight it this 25 percent clients loan clients yeah this 3200 loan clients which we ask 
they already 25% indicated uh, after the first three weeks of the emergency stay, status in, the, in, in our country indicated that they will ask for the increase of the financing or payment deferrals. That means it's 800 loan clients in our bank, which already ask us for, for uh, uh, payment deferrals or increase. And uh, current status, this is the information from the end of uh, last week that we already uh, approved 195 requests, uh, which is representing 100, up to 180 million. Based on the yesterday figures, there is already 340 million euro and, and uh, increased number of the clients up to 40% yeah, for, from this 800. That means this is also uh, how we behave, that we are not waiting for the, for the official approval or some state support, but we as a bank see our, based on our strengths and also our position that we are able to support our clients without waiting for the aid moratorium on something like that. Okay. And uh, we are not helping only loan clients, and I would like to share also our uh, emergency aid package presented by Slovenska Sporiteľnia, I think, on the end of last week, Friday or Monday this week, that we will help uh, our society, to our society by 1 million euro. This is the first aid. We will see, uh, and we have to prepare also the other measures, how we will support it, but for, first, 1 million euro uh, will be used in cooperation with, the, uh, with this central state crisis team. Yeah, that means in cooperation with this team, we will distribute this 1 million euro to the purposes which are really urgent for the, for the country. Then for the clients, uh, we are also presenting that for the next half year, we will, uh, we will we guarantee them the free account for the uh, for the next six period, six months period. Okay. That means this measure on on uh, the social responsibility side, and that's the the general description of our approach, how we behave in these corona times. Questions to this part. It seems there are no, so maybe there will okay. be questions at the end. So please continue okay. the final part. Thank you. Okay, and I'm again passing to Patrick. No, no, thank you. So uh, now we will briefly present uh, solutions for corporate customers uh, that we have prepared uh, in last uh, 14 days. So as Nora mentioned, we are not waiting until our government and external environment will introduce some uh, financial packages. So we try to react proactively to our customers. So first bullet point, our customers is priority number one for us in these days. Key messages for them uh, uh, are following one, uh, we do not stop using existing limits. So in other words, we, we keep them current uh, liquidity and credit lines. Second, we do not require additional security. So the collateral structure or collateral package will remain the same for next six months. And third important issue, uh, we do not raise interest rates. And probably the most important issue, but very selective one currently, that we are also ready to provide new funding, but for our customers. As we mentioned, uh, we consider the situation that we are moving from predictable times to unpredictable times. Therefore, we will ask also our customers to do more forward-looking uh, business presentations and financial presentations of, of their expectations. So we have prepared several options for our customers. 
uh, first of all, postponement of installment loans. Uh, our customers, they have uh, three options. First option is to uh, extend, uh, extend final repayment period by six months. So initially they will get six months repayment free and then we will add additional six months to the current uh, repayment schedule. Second option for them is to uh, keep current repayment schedule, provide them six months uh, free repayment, and recalculate this six months uh, amount to, uh, to, to coming or, or to rest of installments up to the end. And uh, third option for our customers prepared is that uh, they have also six months repayment uh, uh, free period and they have final bullet repayment at the original repayment schedule. We apply the same also in, in uh, leasing. Then uh, back to working capital financing. So we, we, we are ready and we do this uh, that we prolong current facilities, working capital facilities. Uh, all overdrafts expiring uh, within next six months are pro prolonged in very, very easy uh, way by six months. So in order to be very quick, because we, we, we think we have to react very quickly in this situation, also on our side to support our customers. Therefore, we have simplified also our processes and changes in financing for our customers. Uh, our customers can apply for postponement in a very, very simple form. So then we do brief justification. It, it's not uh, a typical risk assessment or underwriting process. It's really brief justification and acceptance of the request. And then new conditions are valid upon delivery of acceptance. So this was decision of top management of SLSP uh, without knowing uh, any details about support of from state budget on state schemes. In these times, uh, we prepare also for our customers special webinars in order to present them digital banking because we prefer uh, like we have now this webinar, <laughs> uh, it's probably just one option how to communicate in, in these days. On the other hand, we, we have very uh, professional digital banking platform and we would like to highlight to our customers that this is option, especially in these days, to use it and to make banking with us safe. Our expectation is that this will follow also after uh, after finishing this corona issue. Okay. Uh, as Nora mentioned, we we introduced also campaign in these days. Pomahame Businessu, in English words, we help to business. Uh, we, we, we are providing business account for free for new clients for one year. And uh, second option or second offer from our side, uh, our strategic partner, Global Payment, uh, is providing POS terminals. In these days, we see a uh, tremendous increase of e-shopping. Probably in next uh, months, we will see also e-schooling, e-learning, and so on. This will be very uh, dynamic development. And for these cu customers, we are providing POS terminals for three months for free of charge. Uh, and then also we are communicating uh, on our web page 
to broader com corporate community all these uh, solutions. So probably this is everything from our mm -hmm. side. We would like to know also your experience and your opinion under these actions, whether they are sufficient or what would you recommend us to do for you as a corporate community? And let's have a discussion. Yeah. And in this discussion, we would like to start with this question that what's your opinion if our undertaken uh, measures are sufficient for for the companies during this crisis? Yeah, this is the first three weeks. We are working on the other, but we will really appreciate if uh, uh, this webinar will be served for us also with the new information, maybe a new view on the problems which we are not uh, identified yet. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Norbert. Thank you, Patrick, for your very interesting presentation. I'm sure there will be questions. Uh, if I may start, you know, like I would say in a little bit sarcastic way that uh, there is a famous uh, saying that a banker lends you an umbrella when there is sunshine and wants it back uh, when there is rain. I think doesn't uh, hold uh, this time. So uh, I see that you are very, very pro proactive and trying to help the economy support the companies and your clients. So I see that you have a lot of uh, actions already going on, and I'm sure that there are more in the pipeline. But as you said, you need feedback from your clients and for potential, from potential clients to know what you should change. So I encourage all the participants to raise their questions. I think this is a unique opportunity to discuss it with the member of the board as well as senior manager, uh, director of sales. What is your experience and what is a problem for you and how, uh, how the bank can actually help you? So please uh, raise your hand, uh, maybe just uh, turn off, uh, turn on the microphone and the camera and so that we can have a good discussion. So it seems that uh, we have a lot of shy participants and there is no question at the moment. Okay. Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe I can ask, uh, you know, like something a little bit different. Uh, we, see, we see a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, I don't know, like what is your exposure, for instance, to real estate development. And uh, here in Bratislava, uh, there is like a lot of construction going on. Uh, and and uh, this sector uh, was uh, booming in the in the recent years. A lot of uh, new uh, housing uh, under construction, shopping malls. Uh, will this continue, or will you see some some uh, kind of uh, freeze also in that area, uh, or you think that uh, things will of course improve eventually, and you are still considering some new projects, or these new projects are on hold for the time being? Okay, uh, from the <coughs> real estate portfolio part or real estate customers, this project financing customers, uh, I can communicate that we uh, we tightening the conditions from the equity point of view only. That means we increase the, our standard requirements by 5% in the Bratislava region and for the rest of the Slovakia by 10% for the residential projects. Yeah, this is our first measure from, for the new projects in Slovakia for the residential project and in general 5% for the logistic projects for the other. That means by 5% uh, we are increasing equity requirements injection in the, for the development phase at the beginning of the project. This is the first one. Uh, then from the from the office segment point of view, we are supporting the office development on the selective basis uh, in the Bratislava and Košice. No, in the other uh, other, other part of the country, and uh, also from the from the uh, rest of the segments. That means retail, retail parks or the retail shopping centers. It, uh, in the small cities, there is no restriction uh, or no changing parameters comparing to the standards which we have in the policy. That means this is only the measures which we uh, which we did 
comparing to the uh, situation before the before the corona times thank you very much and, for and, and from the and from the projects yes we have we have also the new projects that means currently we have on the table up to 20 projects which we are dealing five or up to 10 for for the residential five for the logistics and five for the, for the retail parks mm -hmm. um, let me use this opportunity also to ask you a question how how you should be helped because you are also you know like having very difficult times and uh, you are exposed to many clients and maybe they sometimes vent their frustration but you need also probably help uh, tomorrow we have a discussion uh, we will have a discussion with vice governor Ludovic Oder so maybe uh, if there is something I should communicate or we should communicate to him uh, this is also a good opportunity for you. Uh, is there something what the government uh, should do for the banking sector? Yeah. Um, of course, we are we are in the contact with, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are in contact with the authority of the relevant authority of the bodies in the state, that means Ministry of the Finance, with the uh, National Bank Authority, that means with the governor, with the, with the bank, um, uh, banking, uh, during, via the banking association, that means I think that the communication is good. But what we need the quicker implementation of the of the of the measures, yeah, and main support in this forbearance uh, forbearance status of the loan, which uh, which will be uh, where will be change the conditions comparing to the to the the original one and mainly related to the payment deferrals. That means payment deferrals which we are doing will be not part of the forbearance uh, definition. Uh, that means uh, based on the based on the current ECB uh, definition. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, anyone wants to ask a question? No single question from 40 people. This is surprising, really. Uh, so it looks, uh, Norbert, Patrick, that you you hit the nail okay. and, and answer all the possible questions uh, of our friends. Uh, so um, I I uh, I try to um, stimulate interest of of the participants and uh, you can actually as i said at the very beginning you can write your question you don't have to you don't have to uh, say it uh, personally uh, so if you if you uh, i have a question please if possible yes of course hi slavo speaking from aon i have a question maybe from different angle uh, how are you in the Slovenska Sporetona running business uh, in these days? I mean, like new business and business activities when it is really difficult to meet the client, the clients are stressed, they are focusing on how to survive this crisis and not how to maybe open cooperation with new partners. So maybe this would be my question. Thanks. Okay, so uh, I will answer this question. I will, I will uh, split it in two parts. First of all, we are contacting our customers so uh, our, our priority number one is take care on our customers existing customers therefore in last days and probably also in next weeks there will be not strong uh, focus on acquisitions second uh, issue uh, uh, we contacted whole portfolio within four days this is really tough work done by our colleagues uh, in sales network. And uh, you are right, it's difficult also from the, from the psychological point of view because some of our customers have very, very squeezed and stressed uh, business situation. Uh, what we learned also based on that, uh, there is uncertainty and we don't know. It's difficult to project something uh, or to expect. Therefore, our uh, approach to this situation is communication, communication, communication. Yeah. 
I will add Patrick that from the new business point of view, we are able still and we are ready to do business, a new business, not only based on the state guarantee, but also based on the standard parameter standard evaluation of the of the business plans or, or the or the investment plans of the company. Yeah, that means still we have the is dramatically decreased. If we compare, I don't know, one month ago, now the new requirements dramatically decrease. If we compare with the January, February um, requests of the amount of the requests for the new loans, now we have on the one fourth, that means 25% of the January uh, client or acquisition of the new financing. Yeah, That means currently we are on the 25% on the January status. Thanks. Maybe another question uh, from me. Uh, can you share with us maybe uh, your estimate of corporate defaults expected for 2020? Maybe not really for Erste, but in general for the banking sector. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Erste is looking, you know, at the, all, at the whole region. And of mm -hmm. course, we have uh, this uh, very big exposure to the car industry, uh, not only in Slovakia, but in the whole region yes. of Central Eastern Europe. And this, this sector uh, uh, has been going through some kind of um, demand decline already before the crisis. And, and uh, you know, there is, uh, of course, this question like how, how healthy will the Central European economy be uh, in, the, in the medium term and, and even uh, more in the long term if it doesn't change uh, the structure of its economy. So do you mm -hmm. have any estimate of the corporate defaults uh, for 2020 or 2021 even? Yeah. <clears throat> It is uh, really some, we are expecting, as many of economists and, and, and so on, many of markets and banks, we are expect that really the NPL ratio and the default rate will increase. Yeah, based on the current crisis, really expect we are expecting that will be increased. Last week we are dealing with the forecast for this year for the update of the budget, but one item which is still open is the overview on the risk costs. That means how we'll develop and what we are expecting. We are still discussing on the, and this is discussion on the holding level, how we see the retail part and how we see the corporate part, NPL development and the risk costs. But if I can say that if average is what we have in the models and we are counting with the risk costs in average with the, for the corporates, I, I, I'm, not specific, I'm, I'm not specifying for the large corporates on the, or on the, for the SME or micros, but for the businesses, in average, we have, we have uh, 60, 70 bips. Yeah, this is the average for the businesses, not for non-retail part of the bank. That means I think that it will, it will double, this is my personal opinion, by where I expect that will double for the, for the risk costs for, based on the current information which we have here. Yeah? That means in the, in the first forecast. Thank you very much. Uh, I am glad that we have already some questions in our chat. So let me read it aloud. Could you please share any details, insights on how the state support scheme might look like or how Slovenska Sporitania can imagine this process of liquidity injections to business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, we have the, some, our proposal, which we are uh, trying to, to to negotiate and, and to uh, in the negotiation to put in the reality uh, in the negotiation with the Ministry of Finance and and with the respective bodies, uh, <clears throat> our proposal and our uh, proposal for the how the liquidity could be is that we are discussing about uh, how we will share of this proposal of the amount of the liquidity between the banks. That means this is the first step. Yeah, that we will not uh, have the long tenders between the banks on the market who will take who will take which amount which part of the money that means this is the first point that means you would like to have clear for example based on the market shares of the banks for the corporate for the retail and the distribution will be based on can be based on this and then how we will deal with this there will be clear 
simple state guarantee, not guarantee scheme as we know from the from the EU funds structure, yeah, where is the lot of monitoring monitoring obligations for the companies, for the banks to 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 provide the information for the for the EU bodies how this this uh, EU funds are spent. But uh, now we are asking for the simple bank guarantee, simply simple bank guarantee for the without any monitoring requirements information, or not without any, but with minimum requirements. We have some proposal, and there will be provided on the bank level, and we will provide it within this within this scheme and based on this guarantee the the volume uh, based on current information which we have. Uh, I indicated that uh, we need up to up to 400 million 400 million 450 million euro for the our corporate clients that means for entrepreneurs and the corporate clients uh, in our bank based on the based on the our analysis and also based on the feedback from the clients and uh, product will be simple there will be repayment loan uh, for the for the four years with one year grace period a minimum one year grace period and then four years maturity this is our simple proposal for for the product how uh, could look like for the uh, and how will be this uh, this uh, eight in 500 million euro on monthly basis distributed via the banks in in the economy and in the to the businesses thank you so we have maybe five more minutes and some more questions are coming uh thank you very much for your interesting insight mr hovanchak what is your opinion on deferment of mortgage installments does slovenska sporintelnia has already some uh, forecast what is the percentage of climate clients uh, aiming to use this tool uh yeah, this uh, payment deferral, the moratorium for the payments. I uh, we have the, some uh, expectation on mortgages. Yeah, yeah, on mortgages moratorium. Uh, I expect that will be up to 50% clients, but it depends on the this lex corona. If there will be stated that each who will ask for without any reason, and we have to only based on the application deal with this, it can be also that everybody will ask for that yeah that means it depends how it will be based on the information which we have it if there will be based on the application and we have to only believe in the clients and trust in the clients then uh, it will be maybe also 80 percent depends really how it looks like the final final uh, state moratorium this uh, legislation uh, another question uh, from CSI Leasing. Uh, thank you, Ernest, for your question. Are there any special requirements nowadays uh, for leasing prolongation for our common clients? Uh, it aims to be smooth, fast, and helping in right time. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, we are processing the leasing exposure in the same uh, approach like uh, our credit exposure. So it's very easy to extend six months uh, repayment schedule also for leasing exposure. This is what we did also for leasing. Of course, from the cash flow point of view of our customers, leasing or, or, or loan is the same impact on cash flow, operating cash flow. Therefore, it's included also in this uh, postponement of uh, repayment schedule. Okay, thank you. Another question. Could you please share uh, Slovenska Sporiteľnia's expectations on potential impact on housing market in Slovakia and in Bratislava in particular? Do you expect any price corrections or uh, how are you looking at the current mortgage applications? Thank you. Yes, uh, I will start with this last question. How it looks on the mortgage application. Also, first reaction will be that we will decrease the LTV parameters to 75%. That means not 
as uh, was uh, as is the minimum based on this and based regulation 80% from the January, but we decreased by the 5% additional 5%. Yeah, at, as a minimum LTV ratio, mm -hmm. as a maximum, pardon. And do you expect any price corrections? So I think you know, like you partially yeah. answered the question. Yeah, yes, this this our correction is related and how we expect the development of the prices. Yeah, that means this five percent is reaction how we see the development of the pricing. Okay. What is now uh, one hundred percent will be ninety five percent. That means five percent decrease, and this is the buffer which we implemented already also in our mortgage uh, condition. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, another question is very, uh, very similar to the previous one. Do you expect any changes on the residential buildings market? They are saying that there is a bubble, other there is no bubble, and it's a different situation from 2008, 2009. Do you think that COVID crisis will decrease the price per uh, square meter? I think you answer again, you know, it depends yeah, yeah, yeah. on yeah. the- on I the don't market. think that will be significant decrease of the prices, but we will see finally how will this corona crisis will uh, for for which period will be if there will be two years there of course will be impact yeah? but if there will be as we expected that patrick described in our first part that we expect only currently the first wave for the six months and then recovery of the economy we are not counting in our assumptions with the, the second wave and third wave then we do not think that will be significant decrease of the prices Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. I think the time is up and, and we can close the discussion. Uh, if I speak on my behalf, I definitely enjoy it very, very much and, and appreciate your, your time and your dedication uh, to our uh, members. And I wish you all the best in your future uh, undertakings and, and business. Uh, and uh, I hope all of us stay uh, healthy and the crisis will disappear, you know, as abruptly as it appeared. So uh, thank you very much once again to all of you for joining us. And uh, I hope to see some of you uh, maybe even tomorrow for our discussion with Vice Governor Ludovic Oder. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much, gentlemen. Thank when you I very think. much as well. It was a pleasure you. being with you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.